Hello and welcome to Behind the Sounds Songwriter Series. I am here today with a fabulous songwriter who has written for some people you may have heard of, uh, the likes of Carrie Underwood and most recently Mr Kenny Chesney. Please welcome Kat Higgins. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Um, how are you doing in quarantine? I know it's a little bit different over there, but how is it going for you? It's I mean, as an introvert, it's not horrible. I mean, I'm getting by um, and doing a lot of Zoom writes. Zoom is awesome for that. Um, and yeah, just looking at screens a lot. So trying to <laughs> go for walks in, in the nature more. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I think actually it's a great time for music and for musicians and things. I think obviously there isn't much else to do then listen to music and watch things and, and everything so it's, it's actually a great time for it so definitely making the most of it um so i want to chat about so much with you we have got a lot to cover in a short space of time um so i want to obviously touch briefly on you have had uh, as paranormal natural songwriter kind of a different route <laughs> there so you started off in a, a family band with is it your two older siblings we the youngest of the three yeah, there used to be more, but um, I'm one of seven mm -hmm. kids, so they were more in the group. But we, when we were doing the most stuff, like touring and stuff, it was just the two older ones. Yeah. So yeah. And how old were you when you started that? Oh, I remember being on stage, very, like seven years old. Uh -huh. in, um. My dad would have these St. Patrick's Day parties and uh, we're super Irish in our family. And um, all of the siblings, we would get up and, and sing Irish music. Um, and so, it, I mean, it started very young, but we were doing it professionally full time when I was like 16, 17. Yeah. Yeah, so. young. <laughs> Super young, but I, yeah, it was so great, so fun. And whose idea, so was it your dad's idea to kind of start up a band for his children or what, whose idea, where did it come from? Um, well, we sang together as, as children, but the doing it professionally really um, kind of started when my brother bro broke his back and um, my oldest brother, was in a forklift accident and the doctors told him he'd never walk again. And he was a big basketball guy. Um, he loved music. We all loved music growing up, but um, he kind of had to shift uh, his activities uh, to go with the wheelchair and everything. So he would play guitar and we would sing with him. And um, he did a lot of physiotherapy and got his legs back. And now he's walking. Wow. Normally. So um, that's when it started from that. Amazing. And you had, you had a lot of success, obviously, in Canada. Um, what was that like? Obviously, as a 16-year-old kind of starting out, was it, did it happen, did it feel like it happened overnight or did it feel like a, a long kind of slug almost? Mm, it felt kind of like a daze. Like I, as a teenager, I was the very laid back sort of happy being in the background and my sister Eileen was the extrovert who did who like led all the interviews and um she was super organized uh and so it was it was like a fun time mm -hmm. I just kind of went with the flow of things and it felt like it did kind of feel like all at once in terms of like just some of the fame stuff mm -hmm. um I, I didn't realize how quickly someone hearing you on the radio would be could find you on facebook and, and you know, add you as a friend and then it's like oh shoot i have like a lot of <laughs> a lot of facebook friends now but um i love that about music that it just it makes you feel like you you know the person and you you kind of do in, in a cool way with songs they write and stuff yeah definitely um and so w when it kind of obviously you had all the success and you didn't really break up but when it kind of you went off in different directions was that were you really disappointed or were you kind of ready for for new opportunities and ready to kind of go out on your own i thought my life was 
ending. <laughs> like I thought my life was over. I remember it so vividly. I was in the backseat of a car and we realized that we just, um, it had to change. And growth is hard, you know, like letting go of something that you've known for a decade. Um, but it was, um, so when my sister had her second child, that was when she started to sort of uh, want to scale back the touring and stuff. And so I loved her more than the band, you know, so I, I, I wanted her to be happy with her kids. And, um, and yeah, I, I mean, there's always the possibility, you know, Eileen and I talk about doing shows again and, and putting out stuff with, with John, just doing a little project or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. So there's always the possibility of doing it again, but it definitely felt like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Like, I don't want to never play music again. <laughs> it's like, yeah, why don't you play by yourself? Just, yeah. I always loved write, writing songs. So it gave me the opportunity to move to Nashville. And yeah. Pers- and did you, obviously you said you played a lot of Irish music. Um, I'm too from an Irish family, so I, I get that. Um, that music is a huge part of kind of family life. Um, did you, would you say that was kind of your biggest influence growing up was the Irish music or was it country or kind of everything? Man, I, yes. Irish music was a huge influence. I loved how wild it is. Um, the Dixie Chicks. Um, I feel like they have some Celtic sounds in there, like Ready to Run to yeah. me it sounded kind of Celtic. Mm-hmm. So I loved that infusion. I, I loved bluegrass too, just the way they, um, the, like the fiddle and, and all the acoustic instruments. Um, but yeah, definitely Irish music was a huge influence. Yeah, definitely. Um, chicks, chicks come up a lot in these chats. I'm a huge fan. Oh, really? oh. <laughs> yeah, Ashley and I were talking about them last week as well. They definitely seem to influence everyone and anyone. Um, so how old were you when you moved to Nashville? Because you'd visited before with, with the family, but how old were you when you actually kind of made the move? 23. Yeah. 23. And was it just the, the shock to the system or? Um, I had been making like visits and uh, a songwriter friend of mine from Canada, uh, I'd met him and his wife at the Canadian Country Music Awards and uh, they had invited me down. So once I, like the first time I went and I, we were staying in hotels and stuff, but after I had established some writing, like a lot of co-writes and stuff, I had to be there more. And so I would make trips. So being from Canada, you know, you can't move without a work visa. So, um, Derek and Margaret Rattan really gave me an opportunity to go there and not blow a bunch of money every time. And they let me stay at their house and they gave me a car to use. They were so generous. Um, And I would just come down for a month and go back again. And then at 23, I had a, uh, a work visa lined up with a studio in Nashville because I had gone to school for audio engineering as well. And I love editing and vocal like overdubs and vocal tuning and vocal everything um and so this guy gave me an opportunity to work um in nashville on a work visa and then also pursue a publishing deal so that first year i would write songs uh with whoever during the day and then go and make money in the studio and and vocal tune and everything and then i signed a publishing deal within that year so that was that was a blessing to be able to do that definitely and what did you have a lot of contacts there already obviously you were saying derek and but was there many people there that you knew from kind of obviously your career already or was it did you kind of feel like you were completely new to the to the scene almost I felt like a newbie for sure. I, I just wanted to take in everything and be a student for the first, I mean, I still want to be that. I um, just kind of study what everyone does here. And I knew a few people um, that I'd written with uh, 
with the Higgins projects, um, but it was pretty much brand new to me. I was just like, you know, dreaming of writing with someone like Matresa Berg. And then I happened to be able to meet her publisher and her publisher ended up giving me my first publishing deal. Right. So it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I suppose, obviously, compared to Canada, you moved to Nashville and there's everyone wants to do it. Everyone wants to be a songwriter or a country music singer. Or uh, Did you feel the, com the difference of kind of the competition almost? Um, mm -hmm. And just kind of, did you start comparing yourself to others or, or did it, how did it feel different to kind of already being established back home? Yes, definitely felt um, some of that. I think I would calm my nerves in the sort of rat race, like competitiveness of, there is some of that in Nashville, but the, the bar is just super high and I loved that. And I would just focus on how can I grow um, how can I do what I do naturally um, and bring that and not try and be like someone else? Because on the days when I would show up to write sort of really nervously and just try and be like what I heard other people do, it wouldn't go well. So yeah. I realized I was like, okay, I got to just do me or whatever, you know? Yeah. And did you like, when you first moved, was there, was there a goal? Was there a, I want to get a song on the radio or I want to sing at this place or I want to write with this person. Was there anything that you kind of aimed towards or was it just, I'll take what I can get? I definitely aimed for some of my favorite co-writers um, because I loved their work so much and I, I wanted to learn from them. Um, and I absolutely, I, I moved to town um, wanting to get cuts with artists that I loved and also pursue my own artistry at the same time. But it was definitely song driven. I wanted to learn how to craft songs well and write songs that I want to hear in 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, obviously, you again, we speak about Derek and he kind of would you say he took you under his wing? Is there anyone else that kind of stands out from when you first started out that you kind of still work with now or kind of made a huge impact them first few years? Yes, definitely. I mean, Derek Rattan, Margaret Rattan, I mean, they are so dear to me. I love them so much. Um, and they brought me along kind of as their child <laughs> on some things like they they would go on trips from nashville i would be in nashville for a month and they would go to north carolina and be like cat come on so we would take a road trip and i remember i i told people this too like the first time i heard don williams was sitting in the back of their truck on the way to to north carolina or no south carolina sorry <laughs> um and yeah, they, so I learned so much from Derek. He introduced me to Pat Higdon when mm -hmm. Pat was at Universal. And Pat has been a huge um, mentor and guide for me. And I'm so thankful that he signed me because he has a high bar. Yeah. So, yeah, those people are really important to me. Definitely amazing. And... I suppose one of your kind of biggest successes as a songwriter, I may be wrong here, but writing, if you want to write for anyone in Nashville, you carry Underwood sets the bar pretty high. Um, how, so Mexico was on her Storyteller album, uh, 2015, one of the best songs on the album. Um, yeah. how did it come about? Was that a right for her or had you had the song and it made its way to her? How did that all come about? Because I mean, that surely must have been a whirlwind experience. Totally was. Yeah. I mean, we wrote it <laughs> that day. Um, we were starting our right like any other day. And um, I remember Jamie Moore had this really cool Bhangra, Bhangra beat. I don't know if you've heard Bhangra music, but he had different drum loops. He was just going through different... Um, feels you know like that just the drums and he just 
he was scrolling down and playing each one for a minute. And it was like, oh my goodness, what is that? It was like a it was just like, let's let's just write that. Let's have fun. And so we just had fun with it. And halfway through writing it, we were like, oh, you know who would kill this? It's Carrie Underwood. But so we just wrote it like a song with with that in mind though, that like, okay, mainstream female artists, let's try and write for that. Uh, and then soon after we wrote it, you know, the demo happened fast and everything and um, got it to her and yeah, and then it just went from there. But it's a fun song to play live too, it's fun. It's definitely a fun song. Did anyone else hear it or did it just go straight to Carrie and <laughs> there any, were there any other artists that you oh could i can't i don't know okay so if i say i i don't know if i can say but there was another act that heard it mm -hmm. but i i don't i don't know if i can say because it, it was a little bit hard that side of things i don't really know that this whole song pitching thing is like a scary thing that i don't really get involved my publisher does all that but um it was definitely exciting yeah and so. Did you did you meet her before she recorded it, or because I know you have met her and, and since, but did you meet her before or after, or when when was that kind of first meeting? So she recorded the song in the studio, and uh, it wasn't released or anything. And then I got the opportunity to co-write with her, and so um, I wrote with her and Jamie, and she's amazing. She's just, I mean, in the room singing i was just blown away by her work ethic and her voice <laughs> like just really really good voice it's unbelievable i actually was thinking the other day like of every single performance i've ever heard her do i don't think i've ever heard like a bum note like it's just flawless and the fact that she's never even had vocal training just blows your mind. Wow, i didn't know that I wow. think I think before Idol that was I'm sure since she's probably had coaching, but whatever I mean, she's doing, she's yeah. doing <laughs> yeah, she really I just got the vibe from her that she works so hard. And when she's singing, she uses her entire body. I mean, we the song we wrote afterwards, she made she sang the vocal for the demo and everything. And like just watching her give everything she's got, I I love that. It's it's amazing to watch. Yeah. What was it like seeing the song live for the first time? Did you hear it live and just watch? I heard a piece of it. I don't think she, on her stadium tour, I don't think she did the whole song. She did a piece of it, but it was definitely wild and amazing. Um, and just hearing the track for the first time with my family, you know, it was nice. Yeah, it's definitely a, an achievement and a half. Like that's, you know, as I said, you want to set the bar high, you've, you've oh, hit the nail on the yeah. head there with, <laughs> with Carrie Underwood. Did you, did that kind of song coming out, obviously she's such a big name, she has such a huge audience, did it change things for you at all? Did you feel like it kind of gave you a bit of a boost in, in either Nashville or just in general? It definitely did. I mean, it, it um, yes, it definitely did. And I started writing with more of that crew um that works with her um it definitely helped yeah yeah i mean yeah, she works with some incredible people as well <laughs> yeah i mean a lot of people in nashville it's like they all kind of mix you know so yeah. someone you know zach crowell works with her but like has worked with other people and is just super talented so he you know it's cool that everyone sort of gets around to every artist kind of thing yeah, it's great. And I think that's one of the things I love about when you hear a songwriter. So, I mean, Hilary Lindsay, for example, who's written probably half of Carrie's entire um, album, everything. Um, she's written for literally everyone. And you think, wow, like, you just, they get around, but it's great. And that's what I love about Nashville. There's no, everything, everyone just supportive of each other. Do you yeah. find that? Do you find that there's as much as, okay, yeah, there's competition, that actually everyone's just helping each other and supporting each other and so I think what's cool is that every single song 
is its own song. It, it can't be written twice. The exact same song hopefully isn't copied, but <laughs> for the most part, everyone knows like we're just throwing paint on a wall every day and it's going to look differently. Every single song is, is a different thing. So when someone wins one, it's like, Oh my gosh, like I love that song. I think a lot of writers cheer for other writers that get things like, especially when the writer is kind and humble, you just want them to win. So I, I think, I think writers cheer for each other for the most part. Yeah, definitely. It seems like that kind of community completely. Um, so you've worked with BMG for Nashville for a long time. How did that come about initially? Was that through kind of your publisher or how did that happen? And how has that kind of helped you on your way, I suppose? Because obviously having someone like them behind you is a, a great kind of great deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pat Higdon, I'm still with Pat and mm -hmm. co-venture with BMG. So um, it was about four years ago, I think, four. <laughs> um, and I met Chris Oglesby at actually the Carrie Underwood party. And we just hit it off instantly. He is such a song guy, such a, a cheerleader for writers. And um, we had heard about each other, you know, just like everything in, on Music Row. Like, you know each other's names. You haven't met each other. Mm -hmm. But I just knew he was a great publisher and he was into what I was doing and was like, can you come over to BMG? <laughs> and so Pat and Chris and I sat down and it was just a great team. Um, so I signed with them and I've loved that crew. There's a new building now that BMG just built and there's lots of windows. So um, it's been fun to go in there. It's like a party every time I go in there. There's lots of writers hanging out. Yeah, and they're, from what I can tell, they're such huge supporters of, of up and coming writers, of people that you know maybe haven't you know got that song yet or that deal yet and they just seem so supportive and have they introduced you to so many people who you probably wouldn't have crossed paths with, paths with would you say I would definitely yeah I mean they book my calendar so that side of things it really makes it easier because the left brain right brain thing is a struggle for me <laughs> like um, <laughs> logistics and all that so it's nice to like open my calendar and see someone that I'm excited about and I just show up and I mean I book my calendar too I, with people that I know that I've been writing with for a while mm -hmm. but they've definitely made the intros with some really cool people that I'm happy to work with amazing and uh, the last few years, I mean, one of the things I absolutely love, but I know you've been a part of, is the song Suffragettes. Um, oh, yeah. They do. How, who introduced you to that, was it? Um, how did I? Oh, man. Hmm. <laughs> it might have been, I might have gone to one, but I think that, um, I think I met Todd, I was introduced to Todd, or Helena. No, I think Pat, Pat Higdon uh, brought me over to Todd's, Todd Cassidy started that. Yeah. And then I met him and Helena and um, they were super cool and they were, yeah, they just have open arms for, for new writers and, and, uh, and female artists and, and it was cool to do that. Yeah. I think there's such a, especially now, kind of such a community almost of especially female artists kind of up and coming or successful and I absolutely love watching the song Suffragettes and I find every time I watch it I discover someone new and I'm like yes <laughs> there's so uh, be a part of that must be does it feel like such I mean obviously Nashville in itself is such a big community but does it feel like kind of these new female artists there is kind of more and more of you and it, it does it feel like that's kind of solidarity between you yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's, it is such a cool way to meet people too. There's so many people that come through that and they're all good. So it's, it's, um, it definitely is a supportive atmosphere with those girls that, that whole show, they want to 
make people feel seen and heard and um, support um, each other. Yeah, definitely. Um, talking of up and coming female artists, another um, band who, Runaway June, um, mm. you got to co write on their album. I'll be honest, I didn't realize you'd written this song. And when I realized, I was like, oh my goodness, that's my favorite song on the record. Are you serious? <laughs> like oh how it i think it's such a great song so their debut album came out last year um and there's a song on there called got me where i want you which you co-wrote they are i think obviously again talking of carrie they were on her tour last year with maddie and tate they're one of these people who i feel like are going to make such an impact yeah two years do you were you really kind of happy to be a part of that that album and that kind of whole process because they're they're amazing girls they are each of them is um yeah i was definitely thankful to be part of that group uh part of that album um and i tell i've told naomi this her voice she's so authentic with her voice like i love that about it she's got a great voice but she's also um, just unaffected, you know, it's, it's the same feeling I get when I listen to Natalie Maines mm. and the chicks, it's just like her and, um, and I could listen to Naomi sing for hours. Like she's just, she's a great singer. And all of those girls are just like very kind and humble. So yeah. it's cool to get that. That was awesome. And then another thing I want to talk to you about is, 2018 you kind of had two songs that featured on the voice and american idol or people from the voice and american idol which obviously for you who kind of had this career more so probably before these shows even existed what was that like so it was um old soul on the voice which was spencer yeah. baker and then caleb lee hutchinson from hutchinson even from american idol uh, with johnny cash Hart. Did, again, was that kind of one of their moments where there's such a huge platform for your songs? I mean, millions and millions of viewers. And how, how did that come about? Was that a, an artist set up or was it a, a show kind of set up, if that makes sense? It was super, super fast. I didn't even know about it. I, I didn't know it was happening until 24 hours before. <laughs> I mean, I, got, I was hanging with my friends at my house, I had made dinner for them and it was a, sorry, I'm just putting on chapstick because it's so dry right now. I don't know. Uh, and I was just hanging with them. I got a call from Sam, Sam James, who I co-wrote, um, this, uh, what were the, <laughs> I'm like, I'm blanking on the thing. Um, old soul. Yeah. Yes. Old soul. Um, and he was like, uh, it looks like Spench is going to sing it tomorrow. So get ready. <laughs> I'm like, what? I didn't even know she had it. So that was all just kind of happening. And Sam was like super on it with that. He's gotten other uh, placements like that. So my publisher at like nine o'clock at night was handling all that with all the writers. And then same thing with the American Idol thing. Like I, it was a... Uh, super exciting because it was all yeah it was kind of around the same time mm. it was like ooh, like and they're both <laughs> competitive shows yeah kind of doing a similar thing so it was super interesting that yeah. happened and did you did you feel a difference even i mean for them two shows particularly they're really present on like social media and things like that so did you kind of feel like you'd had more recognition or was there or did it just feel like a normal song release was it was it different to normal um I mean, anytime a song is like cut by an artist and endorsed, and especially they were both the finales. So that was super exciting. Um, it's like, it's a hooray moment and it, it just felt really great. So um, I did notice there were people that, there were fans of the show that would follow me and stuff from that, but um, it wasn't, it wasn't like a landslide huge thing, um, but it was, it was just, a happy time it's cool yeah. thanks celebrate definitely definitely um so fast forwarding i'm just conscious of time here so fast forwarding a little bit to the past few months um obviously last week you had a release with 
the literally the one and only Kenny Chesney. Um, I want to talk loads about it because I'm so intrigued as to how it happened. Um, so I saw your Instagram post. He was a huge influence for you growing up. Am I right in saying that? And yes. I know you said you and your sister used to sing to him. So firstly, how did that song come about? Um, was it, again, was it written for him or was it already a song and it, it made its way to him? <laughs> again, it's that. I think that works usually better when you just write a song. Uh, and a lot of times when you have that moment where it's like, oh, I, I want to sing this. That's a good thing. Like anytime I would be like, oh, I really love this song. I, I, I want to sing it out or I want to record it myself. Um, people can feel that. But it also means that it was written um, kind of spot on to what you're trying to say, too. It was like, um, but yeah, it was just a, a regular day and um, writing with Adam James and Brett James. And we all brought our thing. I think it was Adam's title. Mm -hmm. uh, we were kind of tossing around ideas and he was saying, I had this idea, like knowing you. Um, I, and, then, and then we kind of worked with it in terms of like the verses, how it would start with knowing you. And then it would, it was like, it was really good knowing you, you know, it, um, so it's always fun to craft together. I love that. I love that in songwriting. If I, if I only ever could just write songs and, and no one ever cut them, I would still love it. You know, I would still do it. And uh, Brett James has an amazing voice. I don't know if you've heard him sing, but um, <laughs> every time he would sing an idea back or whatever, we'd be like, I think that's really good. Let's do that. Like, it's kind of like Chris Stapleton where mm -hmm. whatever he's saying, it just sounds, so it was super fun. And, and then Kenny heard it, uh, I think a couple different ways, like BMG pitched it, um, or Kaya, and then, um, Corn Man, which is Brett's company, did as well. So it got to him though, and like, yeah, Kenny is just so good. He's, he, that voice was perfect for that song, so. Yeah. Um, and you got to, to sing it live with him uh, last week. Yes. How, had you met him before that, or? Was it, how did that come about? Because obviously, I mean, especially in these times, the, the fact that he did it, I think it's amazing. But how did, how did you hear about that? And, and how did that happen? Um, so, well, a few days prior, he texted Adam and uh, Brett and me. And just saying like this gushy, awesome text. It was so kind and so cool. Just saying how much he loved knowing you. And um and then later, then he just texted me saying, hey, when can we, uh, I wanted to talk about our song. And I was like, man, this is like so cool that he's, he's reaching out to the writers. Anyway, then a couple days later, he called me and we talked for a while and, and um, he loves Vancouver, where I'm from, and uh, was telling me about a zip line that he and the band were, had done. And it was, it was just cool. And so, um, then I was on a call with my publisher later that day and he called back saying like, Hey, do you want to come sing on this at my house? Like I'm going to do this live stream and we're going to set up, but we're going to hang out in the backyard so that it's still, you know, the social distancing thing, but then come in, you know, um, he's got that studio in his house. Um, so yeah, we didn't really practice it much. Like we just kind of rolled <laughs> and it was super exciting and, just fun to see um, him sing it live, but also just hang with him. And he's really, really hardworking. Again, like that's the common trait with these <laughs> successful people. They just work so hard and they're super passionate. He's just like lit with everything. Mm. Yeah. You know? he just, he's I like, don't know if that's the right term, lit. I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> like he's like pumped. But I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just seems so, again, this is, he just seems so cool. Like just so everything about him. And I think from kind of the reviews and, and even kind of just from listening to, to the new record, it just, you kind of listen to it. And even if someone else had recorded it, he's just think that's a Kenny album. 
that's mm. that's it and I mean obviously the tour has been delayed his, his big tour but I yeah. can imagine that life will be amazing <laughs> um how cool is it though just for you to say like Kenny Chesney texted me like is that a big thing for you or have you, have you kind of gotten past the the starstruckness now that's not a word at but... first it was like what in the world but then I just have this um this sort of understanding now of what artists go through at that level he has had success but he's had just as much pressure put on him to deliver and and so now um it is it it does feel less of like a whoa and like he's just a, a guy you know so i i really like that he he also has a way of putting people at ease like that when you're yeah. hanging out with him he doesn't have an air of like kenny chesney when he walks into the room he's kenny he doesn't have to be kenny chesney you know but yeah um and uh He's just so much about the music that you don't really you forget that it's not all about him. It's all about what he wants to give to his fans. And it really uh, comes across when you're talking to him. Yeah. Amazing. He's, he's such a, a huge supporter of songwriters as well. I mean, even just that, having you guys all in the live stream must have been really cool. Um, and you're going to sing it for us, are you? No? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make sure my guitar is in tune really quick and just I haven't uh, picked it up yet today, so I'm, um, I will um, mute myself and take my, me off screen. <laughs> yeah, I was like, the only thing with Zoom is people can't sing harmony in live, like, you know, real, real time. You wouldn't want to hear me sing anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, that would be. Uh, okay, let me see if this works. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, <laughs> I want to blow the mic up, but who knows. Hold up, I'm just going to check tuning. Um, do you play guitar or like, do you sing? I am not musically talented. I'm just a big fan. <laughs> um, I wish I was, uh, but it's unfortunately not in my blood. <laughs> it's in my heart, but not in my, in my genes, <laughs> unfortunately. I'm not in your genes. <laughs> Um, okay. okay. Knowing you probably got your toes in the sand at a bar on the beach in the sun somewhere. Knowing you got a rum and coke in your head Chatting up the strange That was a lyric we changed without a care Knowing you, you're still wild and free Knowing you, you're probably way over me Do it all over. It was good. 
tumbleweed. I wish sometimes you'd tumble back to me. Cause God, we were so Amazing. <laughs> it was a, yeah, Walt was a different thing for sure for all of us when we were writing it. Um, yeah. I knew when you said that, I thought, oh, <laughs> when you yeah. said that. But I love that though. Like do, you find that, <laughs> do you find that like when you record songs or write songs often that you then hear the finished product and it's nothing like you first started? Um, kind of. Um, yes. It, there's a lot of that because there's always interpretation with everything but like um and usually it, it, it like the vocal is what i hear too like the phrasing and stuff mm -hmm. but kenny was one where i was like yep 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 like <laughs> that phrasing is awesome like the way he he just spaces words and stuff it makes it really natural and but yeah there usually is a a difference from the demo to what the artist puts out for sure yeah definitely um and so you have some new music coming which yeah. i know everyone is very excited about um a week today so yeah. next friday uh which is the 15th i believe um what what song is it can you tell us a little bit how much can you tell us <laughs> ah okay so i'm i'm announcing today that the, what the song is called a lot of people already know because of the artwork you know kind of <laughs> but it's a song called we go driving and i wrote it many years ago actually like well not many years but like a few years ago um and it's just one of those songs that has stuck with me and and was on the list of songs that i want to put out as an artist and i um it wasn't a huge priority for me to release music. I kept kind of putting it off like, oh, I'll just write for other artists because it is kind of scary, you know, to, to, to be an artist and kind of endorse yourself and self promote and um, Instagram. I'm not the biggest Instagrammer, so I have to learn how to do that. But um, it's been fun shifting gears a little bit to think like that, you know, and just, I've, I see it as service work some days where if someone can get something from this song, then I should put it out, you know, and um, it was, it's a story song and there's a lot of um, meaning behind it, you know, with um, not only just like the storyline, but the, the feeling of hope and um it's written from a a little boy's perspective so it was really fun to write and um i'm i'm really excited and i self-produced it too so it took a while to to finish because you know you can always change a baseline and you yeah. can always oh i want this differently or whatever so it, that was a growing experience to just like let go and say it's finished and Kenny has talked about that too a little bit, you know, just the challenge and the anxiety that goes into making a piece of art, you know, yeah. a painting, anything that you're like, is this, is this finished? I don't know. Like, okay, bye. You know, you just have to give it away and, and put it out. So. Yeah. It's knowing where to finish and, you know, having yeah. that. It must be scary. I, I commend artists and songwriters so much um so it's a song you've been playing it for a couple of years so fans of yours w will kind of know it already um does that kind of make it easier or harder to put it out because it's known or it's well 
Right, right. right. Yeah. Um, I think it made it a little bit harder in terms of producing it. Cause I was like, I want I want it to be everything that is, you know, if anyone's ever imagined the song being with a band and being, you know, singles and everything like, or out in the world, I want it to fulfill that for them. And also for me. And so I would think like that, but I love that a lot of people have heard it and already dig it. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. That's cool. I'm, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I know you're gonna you're gonna play it for us um, before we end. But before that, I just want to ask you three very quick, quick fire questions. Okay. <laughs> um, exactly the same what I ask everyone. Um, just to kind of end our chat today, which has been amazing. So my first question for you: Can you name three songs that you wish you'd written? You'd wrote. You've written. Ah. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, red rag top. Uh, both sides now, Joni Mitchell. Anything but mine, Kenny Chesney. <laughs> I'm just going to go with the first thing. I love that song. So. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah okay this is i i think it's a tough one if you could never write a song again or never sing on stage again which would you pick oh, which song would i pick no so if you could never if you were like oh, write a song or i'll never sing on stage um never write a song i would pick i would pick write a song i would i would pick songwriting <laughs> I know it's such a bummer, but I think that songwriting to me is like I want to do it when I'm 95 years old, and yeah, so I pick that. Okay. Sorry, I'm not really fast with the responses here. <laughs> They're kind of tough, quick fire questions. I should make them easier. Um, and then three people who you haven't written with who are who you'd love to you'd love to write with. Daryl Scott. Um. Mm. I mean, if I'm dreaming, Joni Mitchell. I don't think she co-writes, but <laughs> Joni Mitchell. Emmy Lou Harris. Nice. It's it's a stretch, but yeah. No, it's fine. It's, you stretch as much as you like. <laughs> um. So that is unfortunately the end of our our discussion. But thank you so much. I know, obviously, you are going to sing for us. Um, but thank you so much for being a part of it and really look forward to hearing it officially on our, our phones or record players or whatever you listen to music. Um, so you're going to sing. This is out next Friday, May 15th, but we will put it on our socials. Um, and the video will be up on YouTube and Facebook um, and a little bit on IGTV um, tonight, Friday, May 8th. Um, but thank you so much, Kat. And this is you. you on full screen. Okay, awesome. There we go. Thank you for having me, Leah. It was fun. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. All right, well, this is We Go Driving. In my Superman pajamas, I'm all tucked in. Watching the fan go around, trying not to listen. TV doesn't drown out daddy's voice downstairs and mama comes in and whispers let's go driving and we go driving get that feeling like we're flying mama takes me where the stars are out and lights are dancing on that fast road, she says, lay your head beside me. Ain't no one can catch us when we go driving. We go driving. Now I'm drawn on the window, foggy from my 
my breath I put the seat back and my feet up like a big kid Playing Tulsa time and she turns it up Because I love to sing along Mama, why are you crying? I think it's fun Just and we go driving. We go driving.